Welcome back to another Geek Watt video and today I'm taking you over the best £500 gaming PC build for 2016. So make sure to drop a like rating and to subscribe but without any further ado, let's get straight into today's Geek Watt video. The first question I always get asked regardless of the build is how will this PC perform? This build will smash the latest AAA titles at 1080p high to ultra settings whilst achieving between 50 and 75 frames per second depending on the title with anti-aliasing turned down and textures on medium. So without any further ado, I'll take you through the parts for this £500 gaming PC build. The CPU I went for was the AMD FX6300, 3.5 GHz 6 core CPU. Now, the eagle eyed among you will have realised that the 6350 is a slightly newer model, but all it achieves over this, um, over this CPU is a slightly higher clock speed, something you can replicate with these chips as they are renowned for their overclockability. At £78, it's also great value, and 6 cores uh, is really good, even for a little bit of editing as well, if you want to dabble your hand in that. The motherboard I went for is the Gigabyte GA970A-DS3P, it's an ATX um, AM3 Plus motherboard, it's got the AM3 Plus socket on which is a slightly new socket over the AM3 socket and at £50 it gives SATA 3 6 gigabit per second which is a lot harder than you think to find on motherboards using this chipset. For the RAM I went for two 4GB DIMMs of Kingston Hyperx Fury, uh, you can get it in white, black, red or blue but I've gone for white for this part so this, for this build and at £33 it's a great deal. For storage, I went for an SSD and a hard drive, both at 35 quid. It's the Kingston SSD now V300 series, 120GB, 2.5-inch solid-state drive, and the Sega Barracuda 1TB, 3.5-inch, 7200rpm internal hard drive. The SSD will give room for a couple of games, nice and reliable. Uh, you've got your copy of Windows, your boot drive, your C drive, nice and fast. And the hard drive will be give you room to store all your Steam library, a load of documents, uh, all that kind of stuff. For the video card, I went for the Asus Radeon R9380X. It's a 4GB video card and at just under £200, it um, could be seen as a little bit on the pricey side, but it's a really nice deal. It's 380Xs, uh, one of AMD's slightly higher end uh, graphics card. It, it, it's just in the middle, around about the higher end of the middle, shall we say. And it's got a 4GB frame buffer, making it great for resolutions above 1080p, namely 1440p. For the case, I went for the Thermaltake Versa H21. It's got a window on, it's got USB 3 and USB 2. The USB 2 is especially great for the legacy peripherals, as USB 3 can be quite picky. And the fact that it's got USB 3 allows fast transfer speeds, um, uh, which you can take advantage of. And for £30, it's got a window on, you can admire your hard work, and is a really solid case choice. For the power supply, it went for the EVJ 600B 600 watt 80 plus bronze certified ATX power supply. 600 watts could be seen as slightly overkill, but AMD builds are typically more power hungry. And if you're wanting to do some overclocking, you want some headroom anyway. And at 394 watts total draw for this system, you've got just over 200 watts of headroom. The 80 plus bronze certification guarantees it's going to perform above 82 83% efficiency at all times, and that's tested at 20, 50, and 100% load scenarios. And it's yet another great value addition at just under £50. If you found this video helpful, drop a like rating, make sure to subscribe, and as always, we'll see you in the next Geekawatt video.